I'm back, finally. <laughs> Greetings, good morning everybody. I took a four day trip down to Rocky Point, Mexico and uh, had every intention of continuing my live streams in Rocky Point. Two problems though. One, the Wi-Fi was terrible. I mean, I couldn't even get emails on my phone using their Wi-Fi. Fortunately, uh, I had, you know, a data plan with Verizon that worked down there and I turned on roaming and I was able to do that. So that was the first problem. So I didn't have a good enough connection. The second problem is behind me. I took my laptop with me, microphone, everything ready to go. But the laptop's back there. <laughs> I get inside, open the bag. No laptop. What's a guy to do? I was. <laughs> so I just hung out at the beach. I had a good time. Met some friends down there from Washington State. Hey, while you're here, subscribe and then hit that like button because this is an interactive show and I can't be the only one here pushing buttons. So today we have 7,610 homes available on the market while I was gone over the weekend. We finally, finally went above 8,000. Not that that's a significant number, but it is a, um, a growing trend. And if we're sitting here today at 7610, we'll be at 8,000 again by the weekend. What's interesting is on the seven day moving average. Now I missed a few days here, so the charts can look a little odd, but we had 3,854 homes come on the market with only 3,567 homes uh, go under contract. That's a difference of 287. And you can see that the buyer activity has, has gone down uh, chart wise. It looks like it's significant, but it's about two or 300 people. And we're going to talk about that and the listings when we take a look at this iBuyer data in a couple of minutes. So the um, number of listings are starting to increase, but not enough to affect pricing. So that's going to be a bit of a, a slow march, I think. Now, um, CNBC came out with an article right here. Take a look at this. The title headline says foreclosures are surging now that COVID mortgage bailouts are ending. And they go, but they're still at low levels. So they go down. There's always devil in the details. That's what I like to look at here. So it says right here, despite the increased level of foreclosure activity in September, we're still far below historically normal numbers. Saw some numbers yesterday on the forbearance numbers and they're, uh, they're coming on. They've already been pointing them on the market. And, uh, and if you look at Arizona numbers, there's maybe about 6,000 out there that may end up leaving uh, their forbearance and actually getting on the market. But we're, you know, that's for the, we're selling 11,000 homes a month. So that's going to get absorbed very quickly. So again, I don't see for uh, forbearances turning into a huge amount of foreclosures, but let's see what CoreLogic says is going to happen next year. We're at the final quarter here. So everybody's going to be predicting like crazy, but not me. CoreLogic says real estate's going to be up 2.2% next year. Let's put that in perspective, shall we? They said 2021, we were going to be down 1.3. And this is nationally, and we were up 18.1. Uh, they're saying on this chart that the uh, that they said we were going to be up. Well, that's month over month, 1.3. They actually forecasted a dip, and that dip didn't happen. And I'm not going to venture a guess for 2022. I, I'll go out three months for you, but who knows? I mean, there's so much stuff that can happen out there that you just don't know. Here's mortgage rates right now. Mortgage rates are sitting at 3.18. This is a national survey. So, you know, your lender, that will vary. Um, you can get something below that. So, but that's just showing where it's trend and it suggests today it was 3.20. So rates are kind of muddling in that area. They did go up, you know, 3.2 and then they came back down. So, that's getting interesting. Now let's take a look at the Cromford report here. And this is where I really want to get into the meat of these iBuyers, Open Door, Zillow, OfferPad, Knock, who never does anything, and Redfin that maybe buys one or two homes. So here's what we're looking at here. Um, homes purchased in September 21 in total uh, looks like 1,000. 62. That's lower than August, but not by much. And the, and the one that's leading the pack is Open Door. Uh, they, they purchased 585 homes this year, only purchased 73 last year. That's an annual change of over 700%. But look at Zillow, 1,089% increase in the number of homes they bought. They bought 321 
in September, they only sold 36. Uh, OfferPad sold 50, so they bought 152. They're up 77%. All iBuyers combined show they're up 47%, but you got to take out the Redfin and the knock numbers. I don't even know why they track knock up here. They've only got three homes that they sold, so they continue to track them, but it's just not happening. The other standout here is the median purchase price in Open Doors 419, but look at Zillow, 473. They're jumping up there in the, playing in the higher prices where before everybody tried to stay below 400, but that party's over. So it says here the iBuyers as a group continue to purchase a very large number of homes in September, although seven per, down 7% from the record in August. Open doors eased up after peaking in late July and the first half of August. Zillow continues to expand during the first week of October, has exceeded open door and weekly purchases for the first time. Offer pad remains steady, about 150 homes. And so what they end up saying down here is we note that Zillow is showing many price drops among their active listings and has sold several homes for less than they paid for them. There's a business model that works. Um, sales counts are up substantially from their very low numbers last year, reaching 605, but they still lag a long way behind purchase counts. We therefore see another increase in inventory levels. In other words, they're buying more homes than they're selling, so the inventory is creeping up. How significant is it? iBuyers have 3,258 homes at the end of September across Maricopa and Pinal counties. That's a very substantial number when compared to the total number of listings of 6828. So we're looking today at 7,600 homes on the market and over 3,000 of those are owned by these institutional buyers that never really hit the MLS uh, when they purchased them, but now they're available for you and I to purchase. They've fixed them up, you know, put a little lipstick on a pig there and, and went for it. So the I buyers are active, although they're pulling back. But I do find it interesting where they're saying that Zillow is now lowering the price of their homes. Uh, they're losing, selling them for less than what they paid for them. That How long will that continue? If the market, I think if the market does what CoreLogic says it's going to do, you're going to see these guys drop off the earth. I don't know. Um, that's not a... If you're not making money when we're growing at an annual rate of 30% right now... Um, you're toast if we get down to 2%. So what else is going on in the market out there? Let's take a look here. Uh, this is the closed sales over list price chart. I like to look at this, and we are sitting at 47% of the homes on the market are going for more than list. I did get a request for the city of Gilbert while I was gone, so I'm going to jump on that here and take a look. There's Gilbert. Now, we are seeing, uh, let's see, we're seeing that there's 56% of the homes are going for over list. The majority of them are between 400,000 and 500,000. There's 176 homes the past 30 days uh, that closed. So that would be uh, October here. So those contracts were written like first week of September. So 176 of those. Of those 176, 114 went over asking price, an average of 13,000. This was rocking about 25,000 uh, a couple of months ago. So they're getting relief there, but you're not getting a, a whole bunch of relief. You know, you're still at, you can still count on 64% of the homes being um, involved in some sort of a bidding war and bidding wars produce other products such as appraisal waivers. And that's where it can get expensive when you're looking at your down payment, and your closing costs, and then you have to cover this gap on uh, appraisal waivers that can get ugly. So if you look at Chandler, I venture to guess it's probably going to be the same as Gilbert. And Chandler's under a lot of pressure now because they've, they're have they expanding that Intel plant for 3,000 more jobs. So 128 homes sold, 55% went over list. And so that's about 10% lower than Gilbert. Um, and the average price, 16,000. So you can expect in Chandler that you're going to have some bidding wars going on out there. And that's going to continue so long as inventory is low as it is. Uh, the price range and the bidding wars continue anywhere from three hundred thousand on up to eight hundred thousand dollars. It's just one big happy party out there. So a lot of stuff going on. Um, the other thing that we want to take a look at later on in the week is later on in the month. Actually, will we start seeing the se seasonal trend of listings dropping? 
because right now this is supposed to be our happy time where listings are growing and buyers are kind of backing off a little bit. So it's a good time for you as a buyer to get out, but we're not seeing it this year. Thanks to COVID, there are no seasons anymore in real estate. So it's backing off. And if we start seeing listings going down in November, December, I don't know what kind of party that's going to be. But there's there's just a lot of bad economic news out there right now. 4,500 or 4.5 million people quit their jobs recently. So there's just not a lot of good news. That's going to have a psychological toll on the consumer. That will have people sitting home on their hands for a while. The people that are selling, quite frankly, are probably just people that have to sell because they're moving. They have a job transfer or somewhere along that. So um, let's guess and see what happens in November. I think for sure we know we'll have less listings on the market in November and December simply due to the holidays. But we'll track it right here, right after you smash that like button. Everybody have a great day. Take on the week. Mm -hmm.